Can you hear me, Vita? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started. Good to go? Yep, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Welcome, everybody. We have Vita Vea. Our first question today will come from Amber Billups with the Dallas Morning News. Hey, Vita. Uh, can you describe the feeling you had when you realized there was um, a chance to come off injury reserve uh, during the playoffs and to be able to join your team on this wild adventure to the Super Bowl? Uh, I think I was just excited overall, but uh, I think throughout the whole process, that was, that's what I was working towards. So. I think I knew I knew it was gonna come um, if I just put the work in uh, to get there. Our next question will be from Karen Loftus. Hello, Vita. Um, I want to talk about defending Patrick Mahomes. We know he's a, a mobile quarterback, but in particular, this shovel pass underhand thing that he's done that's led to touchdowns. As a defender. How bizarre is that? Because it sort of goes against your instincts. Like if you're thinking about somebody throwing the ball, your hands are going up. Does that just go against everything you've learned? Or how do you defend against something that's in a complete different direction than what you may expect? Um, I think it's just, you know, you just um, just goes down to preparation um, and, and how you prepare for it. Uh, obviously, they got a lot of wrinkles on their side of the ball that, um, you know, we got to, um, prepare for, but you know, there's a they got a lot of stuff that they do that that's uh, pretty tricky. Our next question will be from AP Steadham with WHEP. Hey, Vita, good afternoon. Congratulations on making the Super Bowl. Appreciate it. Uh, Vita, I was going to ask you about you're in the middle of the defensive line. What have you found? The the pressure from the middle, how that affects the quarterback. I mean, a lot of people are always worrying about the edge, but I think you probably know better than anyone. If you can get that pressure from the center, it really moves their feet and they're, they're in an awkward position. Uh, shoot, I think we just got, we got two outstanding guys on the outside um, that, you know, um, could really rush the passer. And uh, um, I don't think I do much in, in the middle. I think I just, you know, try to do my job and, uh, you know, try to do what uh, I'm coached to do. And uh, I think, you know, we work well together up front. Um, uh, you know, I think we, we just, we spent a lot of time in the off season, you know, working out together and hanging out together um, over the years. So, you know, we, we grew uh, chemistry between all of us. So I think, um, you know, we just, we work, really work well together. We'll go to Emmanuel Morgan with the Los Angeles Times. Hey, Vita. Um, the Chargers played the uh, Chiefs pretty competitively uh, uh, early in the season, and they, they only rushed four. Um, how important is it for you guys to uh, kind of get pressure uh, with just the, the D-line and not having a uh, uh, blitz? You said that question again? So the Chargers played the uh, Chiefs competitively um, earlier, and they only sent uh, four most of the time. How important is it to get four uh, to the quarterback and not have to bring extra guys? Um, shoot, whatever, whatever the call is, I think we just got to be, you know, um, it's important for us, you know, for all of us to do our job, uh, you know, when, when we're out there, whether it's playing a run or, you know, rushing the passer. But um, I think it's, 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 it'll be crucial, you know, especially uh, a guy like Mahomes. You know, he, he can uh, escape the pocket. You know, he can extend plays with his feet. And, uh, you know, he can still throw it down the field. So, um, 
you know, there's a lot to, to you know, contain and work on this weekend. You know, we're trying to get our preparation in and get ready for that. Reminder to all media, we ask that you have your full name and affiliation in your Zoom name. If you do not have your affiliation in your Zoom name, we ask that you briefly leave the room and return with your affiliation. Our next question will be from Nora Princiati with The Ringer. Hey, Vita, I appreciate you doing this. Um, so Kansas City has been pretty good all season, actually, for the last few seasons, converting third and long, like 10 yards plus situations when they do get into them. Is there something that can be demoralizing to a defense about giving one of those up when maybe you thought you were about to get off the field? Um, you know, it is hard uh, when, when you get teams into that situation, but, um, you know, you can't be down on yourself uh, during that moment. You know, you just got to, you know, you got to shake it off and keep playing. We'll go over to John Halling with Sky Sports. I mean, uh, a lot of players have spoken about Todd Bowles and what he brings to the team. Is it, is it fair to say he sets a tone for what you guys want to do on defense? Um, I think he just he puts everybody in a uh, position to make a play, make plays, and uh, I think it's really you know it's really up to us to take coaching and uh, take what he's put out there for us, and uh, you know really get a grasp of it, and just go out there and do our jobs. We'll go to Michael Gelkin with the Dallas Morning News. Vita, I had a quick question regarding off the field um, responsibilities as an organization. The Buccaneers have been very involved when it comes to helping the Tampa community in COVID-19 relief or taking on the social justice initiative. What do you feel the responsibility is uh, for an NFL team or for an NFL locker room to get involved in those non-sports a realm of America society? Uh, I think it'd be really important. You know, there's a, um, there's a lot of us out, or there's a lot of people out there that um, don't have uh, resources that we have. And I think um, we have, um, we're in the position to be able to offer um, certain resources to, uh, you know, people in need uh, during the time we're in right now. We'll go to Adam Barton. Avita, how much pressure do you feel to be perfect when you're playing against such a talented team as the Chiefs on defense? What did you say? How, many, how much pressure? Yeah, how, how is it? Is it is there more pressure when the, you're playing against superstars such as Tyreek Hill, Patrick Mahomes, and, and Travis Kelsey? Uh, shoot, there's obviously a lot of pressure. Um, they got a lot of weapons on offense, so... You know, there's a lot to, um, you know, take care of uh, when you play against a team like this, uh, especially them. They got, you know, a lot of guys that, uh, could, you know, could really do some damage and, you know, hurt us. Our next question will be from Jonathan Adams. Hey, good afternoon, Vida. Um, we kind of live in a fantasy football era where we're drawn to maybe like the receivers and tight ends and running backs. I'm curious if you could walk the casual fan into what it is you do in the middle of the field that unlocks guys like Shaq Barrett, JPP, Devin White, those guys to, to get to the quarterback. And then a quick follow-up. Do you see yourself playing about the same number of snaps in the Super Bowl as you did in the NFC Championship? Uh, first of all, shoot, I don't do anything to free them up. They, that's all them. Um, you know, they, they got to rush the passer too. So that's whatever they do to get to the quarterback. I think that's, 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 what, that's, that's a credit to them, not me. Um, you know, we're all out there doing our job. So, um, I think whoever gets to the, to the passer is, a is a good job on them. And, uh, I'm not sure. We will go to John Ackerman. Hey, Vita. Uh, I've just seen you mention your faith in God uh, a few times on social media and in, in some previous interviews. I'd love to hear uh, a little bit more about your, your faith in God and just how you relied on that throughout uh, this season, coming back from your injury. Uh, I think it, I relied on it a lot. You know, um, obviously I had a bunch of family and friends praying for me. 
And, um, you know, I just – I knew if it was meant to be, um, then I was going to be out there and play again. So, um, obviously, it was meant to be for, for me to go out there. So, you know, I'm extremely blessed to uh, have the opportunity to make it back and, you know, come out here and play, especially in the, um, in the stage we're playing at. Um, so, you know, I'm just I'm, – I'm extremely blessed – um, to, you know, be here and be playing. We'll go to Gerardo Lopez. Hey, Vita. Greetings from uh, Puerto Rico, uh, and congrats on making it to the big game. Uh, wondering, wondering what's your uh, plan for these upcoming days uh, leading up uh, to a Super Bowl Sunday? What's my plan? Yeah, what are your plans for, I, I guess, today, tomorrow, and Saturday? Uh, I think my plans are to, you know, study film, study my plays, um, get some recovery in, um, eat some healthy food, um, get some rest, relax a little bit. You know, we're still – I'll say Thursday, three days out, three, four days out, uh, and then go out there and try to get a win. Our next question will be from James Yarcho. Hey, Vina, congratulations on making it to the Super Bowl. I asked Patrick Mahomes yesterday, you know, about the difference between the Buccaneers defense without you in week 12 and with you this Sunday. And he said, you're a guy that he always has to know where you are on every play because you can disrupt an entire game. What is it that you need to do to try to prevent Patrick Mahomes from essentially being Patrick Mahomes being so elusive and so creative in the passing game? Um, I don't think it's just me. I think uh, we all got to do our jobs and, um, everybody has to do what we've been coached to do all week um, as a collective group. Um, you know, the guy like that doesn't take one person to, you know, really contain them. It takes the whole defense to, you know, be on the same page doing a job. You know, if one person not on the same page, then, you know, it can cost us. We will go to Matt Birch. Hey, Vita, there's an amazing video clip from your high school tape currently being circulated by Max Preps and Warren Sharp in which you receive a handoff, then proceed to juke the hell out of two defenders and run for a 35-yard touchdown. We know you played a few snaps as Wildcat quarterback back then. Can you sh still share if, if you still have that cutback ability, which we consider elite for a guy your size? And also elaborate on that play, specifically if it sticks out in your mind as one of your favorite highlight reel moments. We love it, and social media does too. And they've been talking about it all week. Nah, I probably I probably don't got those same moves. You know, this was a long time ago. This was when I was in in high school, and I still had that. I wasn't I wasn't um, three hundred plus pounds. Um, you know, I was still like probably two hundred fifty pounds, and able to outrun a lot of people on the field. But I probably can't outrun a lot of guys now. So. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I got I got that that same elusiveness in me um, to run the ball like I did in high school, um, and uh, that play. I think it was just it just happened. You know, I just um, used to mess around in practice. Um, I'm just out going scout team and and just run the ball and just mess around. And then one day during the game, it was like a crucial third down. And I told my coach, I was like, let me run, I'll score. And he let me run, and I scored. And ever since then, he just he let me run. We'll go to Alex Fleming. Alex? Hello, Mr. Vang? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, Vita? First and foremost, thank you for coming back. Love to see you back. I saw the injury that happened week five. Um, question one, are you completely healed? Question two, last year you and Adamic and Sue were the most dominant rush defenders. Do you feel that you and Sue have to have the game in your lives to get this ring against the Kansas City rush? Uh, one, I think... Uh... 
I'm completely healed. Um, or else I don't think I'd be playing if I wasn't. Um, two, um, I think me and Sue got to be on top of our game. And then uh, not only us, I think everybody else on our side of the ball, you know, has to be um, dominant. Um, not only me and Sue, the rest of our D-line, you know, they do a hell of a job of, you know, playing the, playing the run and uh, getting after the passer. We'll go to Shelby Allen. Uh, hi, Vita. Um, I, I know a lot of teams around the league, like the Bucks, have uh, two unique running backs uh, to kind of shake the other team. How hard is it going against a team with three distinct, almost starter-level running backs in their backfield? Shoot, it's really hard. Um, to do to, to face teams like that, you know, normally you uh, you see teams like you said that you know just have one running back that uh you know that you have to really game plan against, and um, you know when you play a team like Kansas City and they have three of them, um, that's when it gets really hard for us, um, basically because there's three different you know running backs that you have to study, and um, three different running backs you have to play against, you know that play. That, that they all run different and play different. So it's just, it's a, uh, it gets, it gets harder, um, you know, when you uh, have to play a team like that with three starting, with three running backs that's able to start on any other team that they go and uh, play with. We'll go to Klaus Helming. Hey, Vita, this is Klaus Helming calling in from Denmark. Um, I have a quick question for you that probably has a very long answer. And the question is, how do you say your real name? Vita Ver. That's how you say it. We'll go to Fernando Ramirez. Hey, Vita. Um, quick question for you. The, 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 T the Tampa Bay Buccaneers played the Kansas City Chiefs earlier in the season. You weren't in that game. The game ended up, I think, I believe 24-21. Do you feel like you could be the X factor this weekend heading into the game because you didn't play in that game and it was such a close, tight-knit game? Uh, no, nah, not really. You know, I think we just, we're still the same team. You know, and, um, I don't think one person really makes that big of a difference in the game. You know, it's, a, it's obviously a group effort. And um, I think we just we all got to play good um, come Sunday. Our next question will be from Fernando Ramirez. Fernando has left. We'll go to Joel D. Smith. Hey, Vita, I got a question about uh, Coach Lori Locus. Um, I'd like for you to tell me how you describe her coaching style and have you ever had a female coach before? Uh. I think uh, Coach Lowe might be uh, – we had a rookie – my rookie year we had a – we didn't really have a female coach, but she was um, she was around, you know, helping out. But um, Coach Lowe is like one of the first uh, assistant D-line coaches that I've ever had. Um, and, you know, she does a good job uh, of helping us out, you know, and um, helping us out with, you know, certain techniques things that we, that we do throughout the week. Um, she knows she's always on, on us to, you know, doing the small things right. Um, you know, as you think about it at the end of the day, as long as you do the small things um, and you, they add up to the bigger picture. And, uh, you know, she's also helping us in the meeting room, um, you know, with plays and everything. And, uh, you know, helping us, helping us out, you know, with uh, – against teams, against different teams, you know, we have a question about them, you know, we get ask, we get asked her and, you know, she'll do a good job of uh, helping us out and, you know, and giving us the, the best, you know, answer she can give us. And, you know, she's been, she's been really extremely helpful towards us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an honor to have her on our staff. You know, she's, she's really been a big help to us. We'll go to Nick Jacobs with KSHB. 
Vita, I'm curious for you, what are the keys for you being a good run defender and what's your favorite pass rush and why? The keys to being a good run defender. Uh, I never really played nose, nose guard until I got to college. And, you know, when I first got to college, um, um, I was playing behind a guy or there's, we had a senior there. His name was Danny Shelton. Um, he plays for the Lions right now. So um, when I went to school with him, I basically saw how he, you know, played football and how he played nose guard. And he showed me, he showed me a lot of uh, different techniques. And, you know, I just, I, I really studied his game in college. And, um, you know, I took it into my own. And uh, it's, it's really helped me um, be successful. And then my favorite pass rush move is a spin move because I'm 340 pounds and people don't expect me to do a spin move. We'll go to Michael McQuaid. Hey, Vita, how's it going? Uh, from Ireland, congrats on getting to the Super Bowl one. Um, obviously, you know, v- v- your coach Bruce Arian said to you, you know, you keep working, we'll, we'll keep winning. And this is when you obviously were first injured and you've obviously defied the odds and came back in such a great fashion. Can you maybe talk to us about your relationship with Coach Arians? Uh, we have a we have a great a relationship, me and uh, BA. Um, he's the milkman. We call him the milkman around here. Um, I don't want to get too deep into that. You guys can ask him yourselves, but I call him the milkman. We'll go to Josh Allen. Hey, Vita, how are we doing today? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How difficult of a road was it to kind of get back to where you are now? And if you had to put a, a percentage on your health uh, going into the game last week and this week uh, into the Super Bowl, what would you put that at? Uh, hundred percent. I'd say I'm hundred percent. Um, or else if I wasn't hundred percent, I don't think I'd be playing. Um, so yeah. We have time for a few more. We'll go to Cherie Cruz. Hey Vita, thanks for the time. Um, I was hearing that last week you're mentioning when you were injured, you had a different perspective of the game, not being on the sideline. I was wondering what that was and how you're able to uh, bring that to the team with the Super Bowl on the line. What was that? I had a different what? You said you had a you got a different perspective of the game when you were injured and out and just being able to watch, not from the sideline. I was wondering uh, what that perspective was that you saw differently from when you were injured and just watching. Uh, I think it's just different. You know, you, you never want to be um, on the hurt um, on the sidelines watching. Um, so, you know, when you do, you, but you, you're just, you're, you're sitting there watching the game on TV or, or in the suite and you're just, it's just you're not used to it. Um, cause you normally, you're, um, you're out there playing. So you just notice a lot of, uh, you notice the bigger picture, um, with the defense and you just see more than what you just what you see from just um you know being out there and just playing basically how you basically like you're just watching film or watching any other game we will go to Antonio Valverde Antonio okay we'll go to Cameron Buford Okay. Hey, what's up, Vita? Um, now you you being back on the squad this week, what are you gonna bring to the to the defense versus in a heard they have a couple offensive linemen who are down? How will that your presence and then their linemen missing impact this game here on Sunday? Uh you know, you gotta we just gotta stick to the game plan, you know. Nothing new. Um, you know, we're in the NFL, so Everybody in the NFL is, is, is good. You know, you got to give them their respect um, first and foremost. So, you know, I can't, you can't go into the game 
thinking that um, it's going to be a cakewalk because it's not. Um, you know, they got the. I don't, I don't think it matters that they have three alignment out. I think whoever replaces them is going to be just as good and you know just as effective. We'll go to Kelly Hallinan. Hey, Vita, do you have a go-to favorite artist or favorite song that kind of hypes you up before game day? I do. Um, I listen to, first, I listen, I listen to a lot of times. I listen to a whole bunch of music. Um, I listen to some gospel music. Uh, sometimes I listen to some some Tongan music, you know, to get, get in, in tune with my, uh, you know, my culture. You know, to get me, get me hyped and get me going. Or there's a, a a Tongan artist that I normally listen to. His name is um, Young Go. You guys should look him up. He's a he's a pretty good artist. Okay. All right, and our last question will come from Spencer Shannon. Vita, hey. Um, first one's a simple one, and it's a two part question. First one is, what would winning the Super Bowl mean to you? And the second question is, it's your birthday tomorrow, so early, happy birthday. And is there anything you want for your birthday this year? Damn, I forgot it was my birthday tomorrow. Two focus on the game. Uh, I think my birthday, I want a uh, Super Bowl. That's all I want. All right. We appreciate you taking the time today, Vita. Appreciate it.